Welcome to Buy the Books, the podcast helping business owners navigate the complex world of business, tax, and bookkeeping. Now to the owner and president of Secline, Lindsay Klein. Thank you for joining us, everyone. This is Lindsay Klein with Secline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time and your host of Buy the Books. I'm here today with Jeffrey Gonzalez of Pay Entry Payroll Company. He has been in the payroll industry for seven years now. He's been a business owner for over 10 years. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited. You know, this is my first podcast that really? I've ever been to, you know, got to be on. And I listen to so many podcasts Do all you? the time. Yeah. So I was super excited when you And I'm sure me. mine is on the top of the list. It is. Right? It, it's, a, you know, when I open my Spotify, Buy the Books is the first one that pops Perfect. up now. Yeah. Perfect. Well, of course, I had to binge all of them in preparation nice. for this, right? So normally it should take a few Good weeks to get through them all, but answer. I got them all done. <laughs> Good answer, Jeffrey. Good answer. So now, the now only... how do you think that this one compares to your other podcasts? You know, so that's what I was just going to say. So none of my other ones are finance based, really. Um, so I listen to like stock updates and stuff in the morning, but then the rest are, you know, podcasts that are just famous podcasts. Or I've started listening to True Crime now lately. So now Spotify is just giving me nothing but like finance stuff. And I'm like, you know what? Now I should be <laughs> listening to this stuff. So I'll get back to you with that. Answer. So what you're saying is I've made your playlist really boring. No, not boring. <laughs> Educational, because I should be working in the industry that I do, should be listening to a lot more of that, I think. So. <laughs> So you probably never expected when you walked in here to the to the Free Donation Studios that it would smell like burnt popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> I, that's the only way I know how to describe it, because... Yeah. He walked in right after Chris Gross and I did a potato chip experiment where we were literally burning chips to see how flammable they were. And what we did not have the forethought to think about was how bad it would stink up the room. (laughs) So we are right now recording in a room that has just a... Very strong. It's there. Yeah. Like you can just smell it. Like yeah, I, you would think, I think eventually we'll just get used to it. I think it, right? we yeah. will so eventually, happen. but yeah, it's, it's definitely there. So if you guys want to check out that, that episode of me and Chris burning chips, we, we have it on YouTube. I'm super excited <laughs> to see it. I'm excited because I missed all of the, the fun part. I just yeah, came in Yeah, you just in came for in like, for the smell. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I'm looking forward to that. I'll be, I was there right after that happened. We were afraid the landlord was going to come by and go, what is going on? So hopefully I did not get Free Donation Productions kicked out of the building. Nah, I doubt it. It's not It's not that bad, but uh, but it's just in this. I didn't smell it out there. So, okay, yeah. good. Yeah, Maybe good. we're safe. <laughs> anyway, yeah. we, we will digress. Back to our topic. Um, payroll. 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 Yeah. So... Yeah. I told a story about a client that had a horrible situation, and I actually mentioned you by name. Oh, did you? I gave you a shout out because you have been the savior of this entire situation. Thank you. Yes. Coming in on your white horse and saving us because if for someone that hasn't listened to that episode, um, fired the bookkeeper mm-hmm. that was handling the payroll because of some situations that were going on, wasn't happy. As soon as that happened... The bookkeeper's holding all information hostage. Yeah. Not being cooperative at all with the transition. Yeah. And this business owner was afraid that payroll wasn't even going to be run on Friday last week. Yeah. Um, So I asked her, I said, would you mind if I call my friend... Jeffrey, I think you might be able to help. Yep. And there you are, and you're right, horse. Yeah, yeah. I got Hair you. Hair flowing, <laughs> shirt unbuttoned halfway, just on a beach. Yes. Yeah. Every time you think of me, that's how I want you to picture it. Okay. So. Perfect. Yeah. I will. Yeah. Now I'm never going to be able to get it out of my head forever, though. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> And poor, I mean, I feel so bad for you because, I mean, her and I literally all day, all afternoon, we were sitting there at the scanner, scanning in check stubs, any documentation I could find in her office to send over to you so that you could piecemeal together what to pay people. Yeah. 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 So, and you know, bless that was, you. Thank you. Thank you. And, <laughs> and that was an ideal situation in when that happens because there was documentation that you could find and scan in and 
not that's not always what happens. Mm. So this happens more often than I'd like to admit. Um, you know, being in the industry, now, I take on clients. Now, when you say this happens, you're talking about where the the old payroll person yeah. is not being cooperative and sending anything yeah, over, and exactly. you have to figure out. Yeah, because you got to know year to date numbers, right? Year to date numbers, yeah. And so um, usually it's it's smaller operations or small payroll companies. It's not always a payroll company because you can get payroll done in several different places. But where either something happens or or something terrible could happen, and and either way, the person is not available. Um, and, and so then they have to scramble because you still have to pay your employees. You still have to get all of your taxes paid. There's a lot of responsibilities as a business owner. And if you don't have those reports, then you're kind of up a creek. And yes. so luckily with this situation, you did have reports. Um, but I've, I've had to back into complete years using nothing but the most recent check stubs. Wow. And just, you know, like, but, but that's the only option. Mm-hmm. Something has to be done. So. Right, yeah. right. You got to yeah. keep going. You, you can't just not pay people. Exactly. So, yeah. So this was better than a lot of situations that I've seen before, but it's so unfortunate for them. Yes. Like the client was so stressed. Oh yeah. So stressed. Oh yeah. Very yeah. stressful situation. Yeah. Cause yeah. you know, it's, it's difficult to have good employees. So when you have them, you want to keep them happy. It- and what's the most important thing for the yes. employees? <laughs> Getting <laughs> paid. Give me my check. Yes. Exactly, so. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so so. I, I can't sing your praises high enough for how <laughs> you have saved us in that situation. So <laughs> thank you. Thank so you. So how can, I mean, I talked a little bit in my last episode about how business owners can help protect themselves from yeah. your standpoint as a payroll company. What do you suggest to business owners to avoid those situations? You know, I think it just it's important to ask some questions um, and, and and about a potential payroll provider that you're going to that you're going to use. Most people outsource their payroll because it's it's difficult and the rules change all the time and it's very time consuming. And so a lot of people outsource it. And so I, I've actually come up with in preparation for this conversation, five questions that I think everyone should ask their potential payroll provider. I love it. Yeah. And so, uh, because like I said, there's, there's a number of things, not just that the company could drop you, but there's also some processes and features in that as you go through and run the payroll that you need to make sure is a good fit. Oh, this is going to be good. I can tell. Yeah. Oh yeah. I put a lot of thought into this. So I love it. Payroll. He even has notes. I I brought notes. (laughs) Okay. I host this show and I mean, Chris, how often do I bring notes? I don't. (laughs) He says never. (laughs) Occasionally I will. But yeah. but you're you're very prepared. I love it. You know, I'm aware of my um, limitations and memory like that. Like I'm not going to think about it. So I, I, I know what I got to do. Oh, I, I can't tell you how many episodes <laughs> later I thought, oh, I forgot to I forgot to tell that <laughs> story. That, I forgot yeah. to mention that point. Yeah. But it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's we're all we're good. just going to run with it. <laughs> yeah, we're going to run with it. We're going to run with it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what's the first one? All right. So my first one is features. So okay. payroll features when you're looking for a payroll company. Um, obviously, the first one is the payroll processing. And so payroll processing is really at, at its core is super simple. It's just the basic calculation. So uh, rate times hour or salary less how many taxes that person needs to pay. Um, and then that's the calculation. And then also there includes like creating checks, sending out direct deposit, maybe even loan a pay card depending on the company and if they provide that. So um, payroll processing. And then so that's the core. That's where everyone gets started. And then most payroll companies will offer additional additional features to their product. So, um, you know, applicant tracking systems, report writing, you know, report writing programs, timekeeping, PTO tracking, job costing, labor distribution. Um, and then a lot even now include like a little bit of human resource support as well. So um, those are all things that depending on where you are in your company and how big you are or where you're going that you need to consider. Okay, that's yeah. good to know. And I will say from a bookkeeping standpoint, one thing that's important to me, probably the client won't care. Yeah. But from a bookkeeper standpoint, something that integrates with the accounting software. Exactly. Yeah. So um, making sure that you, well, and it just takes load off of you, right? As the bookkeeper. Absolutely. And it saves the client money, right? Because they're not paying their bookkeeper by the hour to enter in the general ledger information. Right. Yeah. Right. And, and it makes everything simpler. Yes, Yeah. absolutely. So yeah. that that would be one on my list. That's one on your list, good. 
<laughs> and there's a lot more. Like those are just basic features that I think is mm -hmm. important for everyone that most companies provide in one way or another. Um, that, but there's also a lot more that's available features that are available that are another out there. thing that I think is important for a lot of companies. And again, the business owner may not care so much, but um, the ability for the payroll company to divide things into departments. Yeah or different categories, mm -hmm. um, especially on the bookkeeping side, so that we can see how much needs to go yeah. into cost of goods sold labor, yep. how much needs to go in admin payroll, that kind of thing. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. I'm assuming that you guys Yeah, we do that, that, of course. We do that, of course. And it's and it's not even just for the bookkeeper, the bookkeeper's ease of use. It's also important for the customer to be able to look in and, and use that cost analysis to know, mm -hmm. like, if you're spending most of your money, most of your payroll costs are involved with this part of your business that's not as profitable as this part, then it gives you, it's important to have that overview so that you can kind of reallocate funds and make sure that you're focusing on the right place. And I would say this too, there are varying degrees of self-service involved with different yes. companies because yeah. there's some that are full service. They're going to do everything from start mm -hmm. to finish. Yeah. And then there are some that are basically just giving you the software yeah. and you got to do everything else yourself. Which leads me into the second thing that I think is important to keep an eye out is, is customer service. And you're right, because there are programs out there where you just buy a membership, or not a membership, but you buy a subscription, subscription. and you load in all of your year-to-date wages, you put in all of your stuff, like you are actually the one doing it. There's nobody there helping mm -hmm. you, which is fine for some people, all the way up until the other side where you have like that dedicated assigned specialist who pulls in all of your information, loads up your account, and then you report your, your weekly... Or your, your, per, your per pay period numbers to them to process the payroll for you and everything in between. Okay. Yeah. So and, but that's something to people need yeah. to, to know where they, how much help they want. How much help they want. And, and it's also important because, you know, a lot of times people just say, well, I don't really need a lot of help. I'm just going to put it in. But it's also important to consider if you don't have a background in bookkeeping or payroll and it, as you're implementing yourself, do you know what you're implementing? Mm -hmm. Because if you put something in wrong, like that just compiles all yes. year. Yes. And then your employees get the wrong information and then they file the wrong information. That is a huge mess yes. to dig yourself out of. Well, and something that I think a lot of people don't think about is, yes, you can find the software and, mm -hmm. and do, run a payroll check pretty easily, but there's a lot of back end things on the tax side that are going to have to be done. You have to set up all your tax accounts, yeah. federal, state and local taxes, if you have those, and you have to make sure you're filing those mm -hmm. on time, that you're filing them correctly, or you incur a lot of penalties. Yeah, because they all have different due dates, right? Yes, some are, some due are due semi-weekly, monthly, quarterly, at, just at the end of the year. I mean, I am do, have been doing this for a long time, so have you, and even I still go, oh yeah, that's due this week. Like, mm -hmm. So it happens. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. And I will say not every payroll company is created equal, even on the customer service side. Mm, yeah. Um, I, in fact, talking about our mutual client, yeah. that our situation last week, she had already started the process with another payroll oh, company yeah. that was going to take over. But when they heard of the situation, they basically just said, well, why don't we just wait till the first of the year? Then we can start with fresh numbers and we're not having to try to get the year to date yeah. information. Yeah. And you know, of course, she's telling them, well, I don't even know if my bookkeeper is going to run the payroll because she's not even Until talking then, to me. Yeah. She's not even talking to me. So yeah. I don't even know. Um, so that's when I asked her if we could call you. We can get somebody else um, involved. Yeah. Now, first, I called the payroll company that she was had started the process with just to see if maybe mm -hmm. I could tell them the situation. And yeah. um, basically, they sounded a little annoyed. <laughs> and... Um, she basically ended up giving me a spreadsheet and saying, well, if you guys can plug in all the year to date numbers on this spreadsheet and she sent me the spreadsheet and it was massive. Oh gosh. It was massive. There was probably that. two 20 <laughs> tabs. Oh my goodness. And it was huge. Okay. And so she said, you know, I, I can walk you through it. And I, my eyes already started glazing over and I said, let me just call Jeffrey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's let somebody else handle this because I'm busy right now. No, and and I'm glad you did because, you know, it's it's one of those situations where when you're able to jump in and, and help a client, like, that should be your focus is how can I help my clients? Where Well, even, like even our problems. mutual client told me, she said, there is a vast difference in the responses because I had both conversations on speaker. I oh, had okay. the, the, the client heard that conversation. And then, of course, I had you on speaker. And, of course, immediately, you didn't even hesitate. You're like, I got this. Let's yes, get it done. Let's get yeah, it let's done. Start, let's start yes, now because it's yes. time. 
<laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. But just a complete difference in customer service yeah. because there is, you know, especially at the beginning, there's a lot to do mm -hmm. to get everything in, it all is. the documents yeah. you need. And so if the attitude is more like, oh, this is such a pain, you know, or here, why don't you just do that and yeah. let me know when you're done with it. Yeah. There's a huge difference. There is a huge difference. Yeah. Well, and then, but going back to what I was saying about like self-implementing yourself, there's a lot, even filling out a spreadsheet, like you mm -hmm. can fall into those same problems. And I, and I say it's junk in, junk out. If you mm -hmm. don't put the right information in, you're not going to get the right information. Mm -hmm. And the problem with those kind of problems is that you never find out about it until like it's way mm -hmm. late, mm -hmm. right? Miscalculations come through in like March of the next year mm -hmm. when they're starting to catch up with W-2s and stuff. And they're like, oh, this is all wrong. Nothing matches. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's that's fun. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So big deal. Like, yeah. I probably put that as number one priority. Yeah, yeah. Customer service, I think, is super important. Yep, exactly. Okay, so what's number three? So number three is going to be technology. So okay. kind of going into what you're saying, integrating yes. with, you know, common accounting softwares, having that automatic download mm -hmm. so that you don't have to do all that. But it's not just that different. Depending on your company, you may have a point of sale system. You may mm. have, uh, you know, you may offer benefits. And so you need to offer some type of benefit enrollment piece and you need to, um, you Maybe know, time tracking, time tracking. There's just so many different products that payroll can integrate with. And it's important to make sure that the company that you're choosing or the provider that you choose has as much integration as you need, or, or at least understand that if it doesn't what that means for mm -hmm. you yeah and so what work that's gonna require on your part absolutely yeah. i love that yeah do you have one that will automatically download reports somewhere because that's on my wish list <laughs> You know, because we as bookkeepers, we have to download all the reports yeah. all the time, yeah. you know, because I want to make sure not only do we have them saved somewhere, but that we have them attached to the journal mm -hmm. in the books. Yeah. So, yeah. Can we get an automated, just, just some kind of system that does that for us automatically, Jeffrey? We have the technology. Do you? We do have for the real? technology. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I would say with QuickBooks Online, there's an automatic. Really? That the, just the documents. The, everything just, documents. Really? Yeah. And it just, well, so once you do that initial mapping, that. it just happens. Yeah. So I'll show you that. And then for non-online ones, because there's a lot of desktop solutions, you, you will just map out a spreadsheet that you can upload into that. So That's um, awesome. I mm -hmm. thought. I was joking. Like no, I, you're not joking. So if that's on your wish list, it's already done. That's amazing. I already got it for of you. Of course, Jeffrey would already have it. <laughs> it's what love I do. It. It's what I, love I do. That. And that's not only that, but so the thing is with other, you know, one of the important things to also ask your payroll company when it comes to technology is if you're going to use a timekeeping system or an applicant tracking system, benefit enrollment system, a lot of large companies will purchase and acquire other programs and try to integrate it. The problem is that can happen sometimes is you have separate logins for each of those. Oh, right. You know what? <laughs> I just had a prospective client I met with, and she was complaining about that exact yeah. issue. They, she, the payroll company she went with, yeah. I won't name any names, but they have given her a different login for every website, for every exactly. service they have. Yeah. And that's the problem. And so they, those systems may communicate in the background and, and transfer information to each other, but as a user... Not it's only as the payroll person who the a business owner, but also as the individual employees may have to log into several different places. So that single sign on is such a lifesaver. So that's another thing that many people don't think about on the front end, but can, I mean, like you said, people, that's the biggest gripe yes, yes. after the fact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, single sign on is important. Very unhappy. Yeah. So. <laughs> You know, yeah. Actually, you're helping with that client too. Yeah, okay, I forgot. Good. That's right, because I sent her to you. I'm like, he'll help you. <laughs> he'll help he'll you get it that. all straightened out. <laughs> exactly. So, it, so that's the thing. So there is multiple different systems. Yeah. And, and so that's just another thing that I would make sure to ask. Yes, absolutely. How many logins am I going to have to have with your company? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and uh, and you know, just I, I have a hard time keeping track of one half the time, yet along all of them. Have you ever heard, we use Zoho Vault, but uh -huh. there's several of them out there that, yeah. that stores all of the passwords. Yeah. It has been amazing. So I just started using LastPass. Oh yeah, I'm familiar that, with is, that yeah, one. Okay, so same system. Same, thing. Yeah. Same, yeah. same idea yes, though? Okay, yes, yeah. exactly. So I just started using that, which is helpful. Very. Yeah. Very. Yeah. So yeah, that's amazing because it, it's basically a cloud-based system that will store all your passwords. So yeah. anywhere you and log into it. I just got to remember one. 
Yeah, exactly. You, you just got to remember the master password. Don't forget, I did that actually. Don't forget the master password. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least if you do, they can email you an, an, a link. Yeah. So. It actually was super easy to get it fixed. But, you know, yeah. like I had one job, one, one password, password, and here I am <laughs> reaching out to support. So that that's my life, okay? <laughs> that's why I write everything down. There you go. <laughs> So technology is good when it works and when you can keep your password. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So keep your password and technology is important as yes, well. Yes, yeah. absolutely. All right, number four. Number four is going to be reputation. So really Ooh. my, yeah, so really my point of that was exactly what you were saying about uh, making sure that whoever you choose is going to be there for the yes. long run and yes. longevity because I have... Uh, so uh, just to give you an example, I've had situations where not just the client that we were talking about, but I've had even small payroll, local payroll companies have dipped into the escrow accounts for payroll taxes. Now explain escrow accounts for someone that may not know what that so is. So when, when you process payroll, the payroll provider should be taking all of the taxes and, and they hold that into an account and then pay it. Now, when you say take the taxes, you mean from the client. From the client. They're collecting yeah. the money to pay the taxes. Mm-hmm. But, it, it, but it usually is not immediate that the taxes get paid. There's usually it's not. a yeah. time frame. Okay. But, so, but most companies, because they're taking on the tax liability, right. they're taking on the responsibility. So they're 100% responsible for your payroll taxes. Right. So and they're supposed so they to be, take it. So they're supposed to be holding the money. And mm-hmm. then when taxes are due, they pay the money they pay the to money. the government. And they never hold it for long. But, you know, as the times come up, they're paying them. And so sometimes small companies, you know, when you need money, you start looking for money and then they'll dip into those funds that are not theirs. And you can get away with that for so long until something goes wrong. Mm. Um, And then all of a sudden nothing gets paid. And then the company goes under and the IRS and the state agencies don't care where your tax money is. You owe those taxes. Right. And so they're still going to hold the business responsible yeah. Yeah. no matter what happens with their payroll exactly. company. Exactly. And you can go after the payroll company, but at that point, there's nothing really to go after them for. And so I've, I've seen clients that are just, you know, they, ha- they have nothing, they, they're, they're broke or that. So I've, people have gone out of business because of this because That's they awful. can't afford to pay those taxes. So it gets rough. Yeah. And if you don't pay them on time, then you've got interest yeah. and penalties. Yep. Yeah. And I know the IRS can take a while before they send you a notice. So it may be a while before they even know that they didn't get paid. It's usually around three months. Yeah. In my experience, it takes a whole quarter. So for can the you IRS imagine you, as a business owner receiving a letter from the IRS that says you owe payroll taxes from three months ago yep. that you thought had already been paid? Yep. Yeah. Oh, you paid them. Just, right. Yeah. But you thought but it had never been, got moved. Right. Yeah, exactly. So you're still out that money and you're having to figure that out. Mm-hmm. And depending on what size company and what, uh, you know, what how much you have in reserve, you may or may not be able to get through that. Now, can a business owner ask for some sort of proof or evidence that the, the return was filed? Oh, the biz, uh, every payroll company should be providing that every, at least every quarter, um, which is a proof of the return that they sent, and it'll have the calculations of all the taxes. So it's important that either you or your bookkeeper look at that. Um, and then you should be able to reach out at any time and say, hey, I just want a payment schedule. And at the very least, if you really, like, if you have doubts, if you have any doubts, absolutely call the IRS, absolutely call your local agencies and say, hey, I need a transcript. Because they'll, they'll fax you a transcript and you can go through and look at every line item on what was paid and when. And, you know, so if you have any concern, absolutely mm. do that. And that's scary. Yeah. You know, and one thing I didn't really realize until I started networking is there can be payroll companies run by people that have never really done payroll before in their lives. Yeah. That they just bought a franchise mm-hmm. of a payroll company. Yeah. But know nothing about know it. Know nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah, well, and and the system theoretically handles all of that is what they sell the the new franchise owner. But there's a lot more that goes into it. And and so, you know, payroll isn't just calculating hours and sending out direct deposits. There's so much more that's done in the background, which is why most business owners don't do it themselves. So how can business owners protect themselves and making sure that the payroll company they're hiring is legitimate, that they're actually going to be around the long run, they're actually going to file their taxes on time? How can they protect themselves and know 
what they're getting is real and good. Yeah, what am I getting into? So do your research. So look up the co- look up the company. Do your research on the company. Make sure, you know, if they've been around for a while, if they have a reputation, um, is, is a good place to start. And then, of course, look at their insurance. Look at, you know, if they have any type of coverage. They should have coverage for all of that stuff. Um, and then there's something that's really common in the financial world, which is the SOC report, um, stock audit report, that uh, allows basically they hire CPAs to go through all of their financials, usually on a biannually basis, to make sure that they're not falling short, that they're, they're financially set, and that they can um, continue to do business in the long term. So they kind of go in and do all of that. And that's very common in the payroll world. So always ask for that, too. I would even recommend talking to people that already use yeah, that company. Absolutely. You ask should. for Google referrals. Reviews. Even if you don't know anybody, you can look at Google reviews yes. and then ask the payroll company, yeah, can you give me three referrals so I can talk to them? But I would even go so far as to ask for, yeah, to talk to people, ask them questions, mm-hmm. you know, find yeah. out how they're doing for real customers. You, you really should because, you know, uh, also there's, there's a... The implementation process, maybe that goes smoothly, right? Because you're talking to that person. But then what happens when you go to like your long-term specialist? What if that relationship isn't good, right? So your first two months are great. What happens after that? It happens often because it costs money to staff people to right. sit to take those calls and to have those clients um and and so sometimes the money's not spent there so i was very impressed when you told me when you made the move to pay entry the company you work for i did that yeah. you really did your due diligence i really did yeah so i i definitely wanted to make sure because like i said i've been in payroll for a long time worked for one of the large payroll companies and 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 nothing wrong with them i learned everything i needed to and it, it was it was great and i still you know appreciate all of that but as i was considering making a change, there was a lot of research that went into it. So I reached out to um, you know, the VPs, I reached out to the president, I reached out to some of the individuals that work there to just ask, hey, first of all, like, how do you handle this? What's the customer service like? What are you, um, what options do you provide? How much do you charge for all of these things? And I had a lot of those conversations to make sure that I was, I I work for my clients, right? I make relationships with uh, with my clients individually, with with networking partners like you, and I don't want to give anybody, uh, I don't want to provide anybody something that I'm not proud of. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That's one of the things that I appreciate about you, Jeffrey, is that you would put so much attention on that, even though you're on the sales side and not well, necessarily on the operation side so much, but you wanted to make sure the operation side was solid, yeah. So that what you're selling and telling people would hold true. I got to sleep at night, right? Mm-hmm. And 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 not only that, but also in a selfish way, it frees up more of my time because I'm not dealing with customer service issues all the time, which luckily I've not taken one call for a customer service issue. Wow, that's great. Um, so far. That's and saying something. So selfishly, it, that too, right? Whereas with my with previous roles, that's... I often, You're putting out right? a lot of fires. Oh my goodness! Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So seventy uh, percent of the time, I was having a follow up call that wasn't, "Hey, thank you so much." Right. For, yeah. Exactly. So, uh, but so that's one of the things that I needed to make sure I solved. Yeah. Well, I I know when you told me that that you had not had any mistakes on a payroll run. Yeah. For any of your customers. Yeah. That's actually pretty With remarkable. Some word. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and I'm not going to say that mistakes never happen. Like we're all humans and they're numbers and, you know, sometimes things don't add up. But it's it's how you respond to that that's super important. Absolutely. Right? Because and, mm-hmm. you can send the client a spreadsheet and say, hey, fill this out and I'll fix it, you know, sometime. Or you can get in there and figure it out with the client and make it right for them. Because people, most business owners, most people are okay with mistakes. It's just how do you recover from right. that that's important. And that's how you build a good reputation. Absolutely. When you're, yeah. you know, like like the situation we're experiencing <laughs> with this this client that was yeah. in a horrible situation and just helping them yeah. get out of that. I mean, that's how you build a great reputation a as reputation. a payroll company. Yeah, exactly. All right, yeah. what's number five? Number five is probably the first thing that everybody thinks about when they're looking for vendors. But as you notice, I made it last. Okay. Because you shouldn't only use this when determining your vendors is okay. price. Ah. Is price. So when you're looking for for payroll, um, you need to make sure that the that you are first of all that you're getting a good deal, right? Um, but there's a lot of hidden fees that I see in my industry that I want to make sure that people are aware of, so that they can ask that salesperson and make sure that they're making a good choice. 
So you ready for these? All right. So first of all, what's included? So like I told you, applicant tracking systems, timekeeping, benefit enrollment, um, report writing, the ACA reporting. There's so many different things, depending on the company, that you may or may not need. Make sure that you have a complete understanding of how much that costs because some people will charge separately um, for each of those products or you'll get billing from different places. And so you may be talking to one person who's only talking to you about payroll and they'll say it's going to cost you so much. And you don't realize that that doesn't include the timekeeping Mm. or whatever. So make sure that you're getting a complete comprehensive proposal with everything included is the first one. Good advice. Yeah. Um, And then also make sure that you understand most people in our industry, most companies charge per pay period. So you know that if you're paying weekly, Mm. then whatever they quote you, you're going to be paying Every single week. That's not a monthly fee, but sometimes that's how it's presented. So it's important to make Uh, sure. So generally speaking, if you run payroll more frequently, you're probably going to be paying more. You are paying more. You are paying more. You are almost always paying more, especially, well, uh, when they charge by frequency, you are always paying more. Okay. Because it may be a little bit cheaper per pay period, but you're paying, you know, 52 times in a year instead of. Other, right. Yeah, so make sure that you that you know whether or not the fee that you were quoted is monthly or if that's per pay period because it may be four times higher than you thought it right. was, right? So Well, and I will say this too. Some companies want physical checks mm-hmm. rather than direct deposit, and yeah. there are some companies that charge for that. Yeah, a delivery. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So you need to make sure that, you're, that you understand how much delivery is going to cost you as well because depending on the, the situation, there's some companies that have multiple locations and want physical checks. And so you're getting charged for every single mm-hmm. delivery. You got five deliveries. You're getting charged that times five. Yes. Yeah. So make sure that you also understand that. And then also implementation. So a lot of or st- setup fees, a lot of companies will charge people to come in uh, when they onboard them to um, build their account and set their account up. And usually there's, there's a fee involved with that. And then also there's potentially fees for every individual product that you that you purchase. So you'll get a fee for payroll, you'll get a fee for timekeeping, you'll get a fee for, you know, HR administration, whatever. So make sure that you that you know what all of your setup costs mm-hmm. are actually going to be. That's good. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, um, how long is the commitment is super important. Ah. No, uh, I, I almost never get asked that question. That's how long really is interesting. The commitment? I almost never get asked that question. And I, and I say, tell people. Yes, that's important. Because I need to make sure, because I don't want to start off on that foot, right? If you right. don't like the service in three months, I don't want you calling me and saying, oh, well, I'm stuck in this contract, right? So make sure that you know how long that commitment is. Some are one year, some are two years, a lot of three years. So make sure that you're checking into that to make sure. I had a prospective client I met with recently who was locked into a 12-month contract mm-hmm. with their payroll company who they are very unhappy with, but yeah. they're stuck yeah. because of this contract. Yeah. So very important to ask that question. How long is your commitment? Yeah. How easy are those contracts to get out of? You know, it really just depends on the company. Okay. Um, a lot of companies will have inclusions in there that like, if there's a valid reason, but they define valid. Of course. Uh, reason that you need to end the relationship, then they will. Um, and then a lot of times they'll let you, they'll just charge you a, a fee or a mm. percentage of like, you have 10 months left on our agreement, you would have paid X, so we'll charge you 60% of that or whatnot. So... Um, so it's the just very expensive usually, for something you're not using. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that's definitely something to also check. So even if you're okay having a commitment, which most do have commitments, so be prepared for that, but just know how long and what the rules are. How can I get out of it if I need to? Right. That's yeah. good. Yeah. That's a good thing to ask at the beginning. At the beginning, before you sign that agreement, make and sure that you understand And read the agreement. That. I would think that'd be important. Read the agreement. <laughs> Yeah, read the agreement. You know, the agreements are usually there. Um, they're, they're usually several pages long, but at least, like, at the very least, skim through it. And I know we all get faced with <laughs> thousands of agreements, right? Every app you download and whatnot, but at least do a good skim through to make mm-hmm. sure, especially with, like, a company that's going to be have access to your banking information, mm-hmm. all of your employees' personal information, all of your company's information. I mean, they have a lot of data. So, so make sure that you know might be are. number six is, yeah, is, is how are they handling your data? Exactly. So security is a big thing. Um, and, we're, and we keep seeing different situations where these major companies are getting hit with or, or hacked and, and the information is getting lost. So you got to make sure that you are I have to tell safe. you a story. Tell I me. I don't think I've told you this. 
I had a client, bookkeeping client once, that did repossessions of vehicles. Oh, okay. Very interesting. Yeah. It was yeah. so interesting working there. Every day you never knew what you were going to have there. But um, they would store people's belongings out mm-hmm. of these cars for a period of time. And if the person didn't come pick up their belongings, most of the time it just got thrown in the dumpster. Yeah. And it, it was sickening to me to see all the things that they were throwing away. Like, good stuff. Yeah. Um, and so I made a deal with the owner. I said, if I had a big sale, because they literally had a, 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 I don't know what the measurements are of these, the big dumpsters they bring yeah. out that have to come out oh, on the a semi. Oh, the big ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Full of stuff. And so I made a deal with them. I said, if I was to just have a huge sale and sell the stuff instead to people that actually would use it, Absolutely. I'll give you a cut and keep the rest. Are you okay with that? He was fine with it. I'm like, Why Great. not? Yeah. yeah. So me and my brother was hilarious. We, we borrowed a big, like 10 passenger van. We okay. emptied it all, all the seats and everything. We were just shoving this stuff in the dumpster. Like we were dun- dumpster diving. <laughs> It sounds fun, though, in that situation. <laughs> sounds really fun, actually. So I don't know how many loads we took, but we had a huge sale. Of course, there was, like, thousands of jumper cables <laughs> and, you know, things to keep people Owners put in their manuals, car. manuals. Yeah, yeah, just, like, car random manuals, car stuff. Yes, a lot, like, <laughs> ice scrapers that people oh. use. Like, there was just a, a humongous amount yeah, of I, these things that imagine. people keep in their car. But anyway, one of the bags that I pulled out of this dumpster when we were preparing the sale was full of people's tax returns. Oh, so apparently a tax preparer had gotten his car repossessed. Mm. And so literally I'm looking at people's social security yeah. numbers, their address, their financial information, their kids' social. And yeah. it had gone from a... You know, their office to a dumpster that anyone could have. How many people touched that or could have touched Cause, it? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. To yeah. our van, to a, 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 a garage, garage sale. sale. Right. And if you hadn't <laughs> opened the bag, right. then that would be God right. knows where. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly. So knowing what this company is doing with your information, it's a big deal. It really is. Yeah. And, and, but. Sadly, nobody ever asked that question. So you're right. Make sure you ask. I mean, it's, it's, and that's the point of this, right? To educate people on yes. potentially things to ask, especially if you're a new business owner and you've never used a payroll company mm-hmm. or a tax preparer before. Those are things that you need to make sure are, are on your list because it just takes one mm-hmm. thing, especially as a small business. It, it can be one thing mm-hmm. that can just completely ruin any yes. progress you've made or even ruin the company. Absolutely. So yes. It's important. Got to be careful. And it's not just the company information. It's your employees information. Yeah. So, yeah, be cognizant yeah. of that. Be cognizant. Yeah. And then the last thing that I would say is a big thing that people usually don't ask when they're looking at price is how much year end fees are going to be. Because most companies charge for generating W-2s and 1099s, and it adds up quick, especially Mm. for industries like hotels and restaurants that have a lot of turnover and therefore have a lot of W-2s to process. Mm. And all of a sudden, the company gets these bills that are a couple thousand dollars, and you're just not expecting that. Because it's not, it wasn't on your proposal, right? Or it right. was, and you just didn't pay attention to that. Yeah. Mm. So make sure that you understand. Well, and how it's much kind that's of hard cost. if it's a per employee type thing, and you're mm-hmm. not thinking about every employee, even if they're no longer with the company, yeah. you still have to send still them a W two. Yeah. So absolutely, the- yeah. Exactly. So you may only have 20 employees, but how many have you had right. for the, the year? Because if it's 40, then you're paying for all 40 W-2s. Right. So it's it's another kind of a balloon payment that people get hit with in January. Mm. And they're like, oh, wh- where did this come from? So make sure that you're asking those questions too. So what's your best payroll story? My best payroll yeah, story? Yeah, you have one that you You just like- gave me a really good one. That, well- that's going to be my new favorite, <laughs> my new favorite story. Uh <laughs> About the time I went dumpster diving. About no, no, no. The the other one with the 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 bookkeeper that just dropped oh, oh, them. Yeah, okay, gotcha, like that's going to gotcha. be a great story for me okay. to use. But um, you know, I I've seen a lot of crazy stuff. I I do know of one that was that was pretty interesting. It was a it was a restaurant, and the restaurant was 
as they were processing payroll, they were not bringing their employees on as employees. They were bringing them on as contractors. As mm, contractors. We have an episode about that. Yeah, yes, you do. And an, an awesome game show involved, yes, too. Yes, that's right. right. Yeah. We did. See, I told you I watched them. <laughs> um, but anyway, so, uh, and so they were bringing all of these on, and they only had, so out of like their, I forget how many they had. This was a few years back. But out of like their 40 employees that they had, only 10 of them who were their front office workers were actually W-2s. Everyone else on there was a contractor on mm. the books. And so as we're bringing them on, I'm having this conversation of, okay, well, you know, I'm obviously not, uh, I'm not the, a tax preparer. I can't give you advice, but I would say here's a link to the IRS that has very specific bullet points right. about which is which. Um, and, and they didn't take my word for it. And, and so they continued on, you know, I'm, I, I can only do what I can do. And not less than six months later, I think it was only about four months, somebody reported them. Oh, wow. And it was just a domino effect of claim, 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 claim. And this was a great restaurant in the city that I lived in at the time. Um, and it went out of business in, in less than two months. Oh, wow. Because it, it just got hammered. And their lawyer was just like, you need to cut your losses now mm. because it's not going to be good. Mm. So, um, and, and I saw that play out. And I, and I also knew them. Because I, I frequented the restaurant and I'm having this conversation and I'm seeing it and I'm like, you know, like, what can you do? That's awful. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, so this that is why it's very one. important to know what is a legal contractor and yeah. what constitutes an, an employee. Yeah. And, yeah. You, and your episode talks about that. So go back yes. and look at that. Mallory Heron was my guest. So yeah. she did a really good job of explaining the differences and what it, it really is more about control than anything. It you really know? is control. If yeah. You're, so. If you're telling them when to come in and yeah, yeah. when to so. come in using, you know, they're using your supplies yeah. or your equipment rather than their, like there's a lot of stuff and yes. there's a lot of gray area. So always confront, consult a professional yes. who can, who can guide you, but always err on the side of caution. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, making someone an employee that could technically be a contractor, there's really no ramifications for You're that. You're not going to get in trouble yeah, for that. No, no. that's fine. Yeah. But going the other way, making someone a contractor that should be an employee has serious ramifications. Well, and the thing is, is that people do this for years. They'll get away with it for years and years and years. And, and they think, think oh, fine. well, it's fine. And it's it just takes one person mm -hmm. to... And it doesn't even have to be the employee themselves yeah. it could be someone that knows the employee yeah. Yeah. and it just has to be someone privy to the information yeah and really anybody who is um who there's so many different agencies that can also come in and audit you yes and even though that might not be what they're looking for if they catch that like yes it's it's, it's right. over absolutely yeah yeah so yes please 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 make sure <laughs> your contractors actually can yes. legitimately be contractors make sure that they're contractors absolutely any yeah. other last advice for business owners out there you know what just um make sure you have a good conversation with with them ask all of these questions because it's super important um that you're not blindsided with anything if it comes up uh, and make sure that you're also comfortable with it because you can always feel like if something's not right so do your research if it's not a reputable company that you've heard of before mm -hmm. then make sure you dive in i work for a smaller payroll company and i encourage people please look us up like once you look us up you'll you'll feel comfortable and that's fine but make sure you do that mm -hmm. research because if you don't you know it'll be fine if you just trust me uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, nothing bad will happen but but things happen bad mm -hmm. all the time and and we've just experienced that and i've seen it tons yes. of times unfortunately yes. so yep you're right yeah it happens often but Jeffrey will help you if you, if you need yeah. payroll services or just have some questions. Um, yeah. Jeffrey's yeah. awesome. So I'm how can people find you? Yeah. So um, they can, well, so they can go to our website. It's payentry.com. Um, you can find me on LinkedIn, Jeffrey Gonzalez. I think I'm only one of a hundred thousand of them, but in the doubt. <laughs> I was going to say, and spell Gonzalez. How do you spell your last it's name? It's G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-S at the end. You're an S, not with a Z. With an S, not a Z. Um, but if you type in Jeffrey Gonzalez with an S in Dallas, I'm usually the the top one. Do you have um, an email address? And then my email is Gonzalez with the S at payentry.com so I can be reached out to there and I'm more than happy to help even if somebody just wants to ask questions like that's I have all this knowledge that's useless if mm. I don't give it out. So please yeah. give me an opportunity. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I love it. Yes. Thank absolutely. you so much for coming on today. I Thanks think this is going to be, it's going to be a huge resource for business owners. Yeah, I that, hope so. You know, whenever they're looking for someone, a payroll professional or payroll company, this is good. Really yeah. great advice. Thank you. 
Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Lindsay Klein with Sakline, Klein, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time and your host of Buy the Books. You can find us at sakline.com, S-A-K-L-I-N-E.com. Our telephone number is 214-396-5020. Email is info at sakline.com. Thanks so much for joining us, everyone. Until next time, have a great week, everyone. Buy the Books is presented by Sakline, honest, accurate bookkeeping performed on time. For more information on Sakline services or to get a hold of Lindsay, visit sakline.com or email info at sakline.com. The information provided on this website and podcast does not and is not intended to constitute legal advice. Instead, all information, content, and materials available are for general information purposes only. Information provided by Sakline may not constitute the most up-to-date legal or other information. Listeners should contact their attorney to obtain advice with respect to any particular legal matter and should refrain from acting on the basis of this information without first seeking legal advice from counsel in the relevant jurisdiction. Only your individual attorney can provide assurances that the information contained herein and your interpretation of it is applicable or appropriate to your particular situation.